Welcome everyone to Creativity and the Paranormal. And this is our second show. I'm very excited to be interviewing Carrie Blasdell. Did I say your name, last name correctly? Blaisdell. Blaisdell. Oh, God. And that was on the tip of my tongue. Carrie Blaisdell. And she's a uh, fellow Wild Rose Press author. And what I'm going to do now is uh, read her bio for everyone. And it's actually a delight. I keep having to do my cape here. It's a delight for me to read your bio. It is so amazing. So um, Carrie Blaisdell is the best-selling and award-winning author of the Dead series, uh, series of books, including Debriefing the Dead. And in 2019, you won the Royal Palm Literary Award gold medal for best fantasy. And in 2020, the reader's favorite bronze medal for best urban fantasy. Uh, 2019, the Romance Writers of America Award finalist and its sequel, Waking the Dead, winner of the 2020 RPLA mentioned before, gold medal for best fantasy, which In Detail Magazine recommends for fans, shows like Constance, Constantine or Supernatural. I love that when they compare to TV shows as well. But Carrie also writes award-winning romance suspense, Publisher Parish, uh, Publisher's Weekly Book Life Prize Porter finalist, and Historical Mystery. She has a BA in, from UC Berkeley in comparative literature and a master's in teaching from University of Portland. And Carrie lives in the Pacific Northwest with her family of sordid animals and more hot pepper plants than anyone could reasonably consume. <laughs> and at the bottom, I'll put your website in the notes uh, and of course your bio again. So um, I'm from Southern Cal, Laguna Beach, and I have friends and family near Seattle and Gig Harbor. Uh, another family member is gonna be in a year and a half moving to near Portland, uh, St. Helens, right outside of Portland. So very excited about that. So um, I also want to start us off with a quick blurb of your debriefing the dead. That's, oh, that's my phone. One second, let me turn that off. We're gonna have beeping. All right, so book one of the dead series, which is debriefing the dead, just to give everyone a taste of what your series is like. This is book one of four, four books, okay? The only thing Hyacinth wants is her life back, literally. She and her sisters were murdered by demons, leaving her young nephew, Jordy, to his family's, his father's family in the brutal Sicilian mob. Then Archangel Michael offers her a deal. Recapture a powerful rock the demons stole, and she can live long enough to find Jordy a safe home. Refuse, and she'll continue up or down to the afterlife. So slightly more alive than dead, she heads for Turkey and the demons taking Jordy, her mysterious neighbor Jason, and a sexy dead guy only she can see with her. But the hardest part won't be battling demons, meeting Satan, or dodging Middle Eastern customs. It will be later, when Jordy is settled and Michael rips her away again. How can she abandon her nephew? Or how can she outwit the angel of death himself and stay with Jordy forever? That's a very good question, and I'm very intrigued. You know, I have that book on my Kindle, and I have one, excuse me, I have one more uh, book to read for Wild Rose Press author for review, an ARC, uh, you know. So um, that's, uh, ARC is, tell me again. <laughs> advanced reader copy. Yes, advanced reader copy. And uh, as soon as I do that, I'm reading this book. I can't wait. So uh, anyway, you're getting some water or, or tea, I take it. I'm going to have water with my Haunted Mansion mug from Disney's Haunted Mansion. I, One of my I have my Starbucks mug with the original logo on one side and the oh. updated logo on the other. So I'm, Oh, that's I'm amazing. A, I'm a you Northwest are gal. The, you are, what? I'm a Northwest gal, so I've lived all up and down the West Coast, but most of my life in the Northwest. So I, yes. despite corporate whatever, I'm a Starbucks gal. So And the original Starbucks is right there in Seattle, right? Or near Seattle? Yep. Yes. Yep. Pike Place Market. Yep. Oh, love it. Still there. I, 
I drove by it one time on a tour bus. We, we didn't get to stop, but I'm like, next time I want to go in. Okay, so uh, the first question of our interview today is, what is it about the paranormal genre that inspires you to write um, in uh, those books in that genre? You know, I just, I've always been fascinated with, with the other, um, particularly the other world. Um, when I was growing up, so I grew up actually in Berkeley when I was very young, and this will show how old I am, but uh, my parents were members of, let's see, what was the official name of it? Um, oh, I forget what the official name of it, but it was it was commonly called the Psych School, and it was all about being psychic and, you know, receiving energy and understanding chakras and all that kind of stuff. But one of my really good friends calls it woo stuff. Uh, and I'm not a super woo person, but yeah, I'm yeah. still very interested in and fascinated. And I do believe that there's like some sort of energy in us that lives on after our bodies have passed away and things. Yes. Um, yes. I grew up reading books like, uh, if you remember the, uh, let's see, was it? the Active Enzyme Lemon Fresh and Junior High School Witch. That's another book that might date me and show how old I am, but that was one of my favorites growing up. Oh, I missed um, that one, but I wish I... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I loved anything that had to do with witchcraft or ghosts. Um, weirdly, was not into horror movies. Like, I don't like horror movies per, per yeah. se. Um, I find those tend to be more humans doing nasty things to each other. Like, I like, yeah. I like yeah. the, I, I don't think all ghosts are evil. Like, I guess is why maybe I'm not into horror movies, but. Right. Um, and then, uh, and then, um, yeah, when I just, like, I, I wrote, I started writing when I was very, very, very young and I would write ghost stories. I would write romance stories. I would write adventure stories. I would write fantasy. I was very into Tolkien and The Hobbit. Oh, and, um, yeah. When I was in high school, wrote a very, 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 very bad homage type novel to Tolkien, you know, <laughs> with my, with my own, with my own small spin on it. But like, that's, that's like, that's going under the bed. It's never coming out again. Trust me. Um, but you're so testing I, out I, your creativity, you know, you're testing. Your yeah. So I always loved yeah. writing those, um, but I love to read romance. And it took me a really long time to realize that most of what I was writing, I was putting romance in as well. And I, like, I didn't even really, I hadn't really thought about it as a genre that I might want to write in. Yeah. So this book came out, I, I actually, I actually wrote a couple of um, romantic suspense novels and then they weren't, you know, this is before self-publishing was quite so common and small presses that were very rare and far between. And oh, yeah. I, I just decided these, these two books, they were, you know, they were getting all this interest from agents, but then they would get to the point of, no, sorry, we're not going to actually make an offer on it, that kind of thing. Oh. So I was just feeling yeah. frustrated. And I just thought, I just want to write the book that I want to write. And it, we were going through kind of a tough time where a lot of family members were passing away, you know, nothing, nothing oh like, no, no big accidents or things like that, but yeah, you know, yeah. people getting older and, and dying and stuff. And so I was thinking a lot about you know, death and dying and what does that mean? And I just sat down to write and this book just came out. I was like, <laughs> so, you oh. know, so, so I, and, and I love it. And I, there are, I just, I really love being able to kind of play with life and death and what it means to be alive or dead. And mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of, of religious themes or faith themes, if you want to, you know, say it more like that, because there's, it's not, yeah. it's not on one religion or another. It's, it's a lot of different questions about faith and, and what's good, what's evil. So um, I, I think right. the supernatural genre gives me a lot of leeway to explore those kinds of themes really well. So that's what I, that's yes. kind of how I ended up there. It wasn't necessarily that intentional, but that's how I ended up there. <laughs> When you, uh, when you say, uh, I ended up writing this book, when you finally, you know, kind of went through it and you had, was that debriefing the dead? Yep. Oh, yep. okay. That, so that kicked, yeah, off, that kicked was, off the series. Yeah. So, yeah. So the okay. two books before, um, I had extensively plotted like with Excel spreadsheets for every scene and character oh and plot line and thread <laughs> yeah. and everything. Right. And the book was, was completely the opposite. This book was, I sat yeah. down, I said to myself, I think this book might need to be in first person when the others were all in, in third person. I thought maybe I'll mm -hmm. try it in first person and just see what happens. And it just, boom, just all sort of came out. I did about, about halfway through, I did go back and rework a plot line in the first third that I decided halfway through was probably not 
it wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. But other than that, this, the, um, I don't know if readers are familiar with the term pantsing. This was all done by the seat of my pants, pretty much. There was oh. no plotting at all in, in the first book. Um, yeah. The second book, pretty much the same way. But by the third book, um, I had there's way too many details going on. I have to do at least some plotting to make sure that I... Yes. Don't lose track of stuff. And that, that bio you read is out of date because it doesn't have the, the third oh. or fourth books mentioned. <laughs> but all oh, right. Yeah. So. yeah. Okay. Well, that the was just the first, first came out. That's so great. That's so great. I uh, have slippery hair here. So, um, yeah. but I love to ask these two questions because that's what makes this one maybe a, a little different. Not that I have to be different from other uh, interviewers, but it's all about not only writing in the paranormal realm, but what type of entertainment in all different mediums of the paranormal genre, magical genre, you might enjoy. So did you have a favorite paranormal movie or TV show growing up or now or both? Yeah, well, both. Um, it was funny that yeah. you mentioned the in detail comment about Supernatural. To me, that was like the yeah. highest praise ever because I love the show Supernatural. I yes. came to it late as an adult, like I hadn't, I, well, not as an, it, it came out when I was an adult, but I started watching it probably or somewhere around, I want to say season three or four. Um, I actually had just, I had left my, my middle school aged son at home while I dropped my younger daughter off at gymnastics camp. Mm -hmm. And when I came home, he said, mom, I found this show and it's got this kind of groundhog day thing where the guy keeps coming back to life. And it seemed really interesting. Ah. So we watched that show and then we went back, it was on Netflix and we went back to the beginning and just binged like oh, the yeah. whole summer. And then, yeah. and then I watched Netflix it all the way through it. to the end. Yeah. I, so I, yeah. I love that. Um, I love the demon hunting. I love the fact I, I just, I love all of it. Um, as a kid, like I said, I didn't really watch like horror, but I loved movies like Ghostbusters. I love oh, yes. I loved things. I love things that had creepy in them that, yeah. you know, like I like I like being unsettled and creepy and actually supernatural and is pre a pretty gory TV show. So I'm not it's not that I don't like I'm OK with like the gore and the violence and stuff, but like I like the other aspects of it more like it can't yes. be just gore for gore's sake it has to be like what's you know it has to have some purpose or something um right so you know, it has to have a story and, then, and yeah 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 and then books and things I like I said I read a lot of fantasy um and I read a lot I, I was very widely read but I didn't read a whole lot of supernatural style books um but I was like I said I was always drawn to that um, when I was in okay. college, my BA that's in comparative literature, it's actually primarily in early Arthurian myths. So a lot of the Celtic legends and the oh, Celtic yes. views, yeah, of of the other. That's why I say other world because that's that's a Celtic view, um, yeah, and yeah. you know that sort of feeling that like you know water is a divider between our world and the other world, and you know mm. so I use a lot of symbolism like that in yeah. my books. Um, so, so I loved stuff like that, definitely. And that's great that you can borrow elements of, like you say, the Celtic um, world, shall we say, elements that you've studied in school or something and put it into story, your story, you know? Yeah. It's, yeah, I was, it's I was all available. To, <laughs> I was yeah. actually, I started at one point to write, I call it the big Welsh book because I started to write a book that was sort of based on very, like, was set somewhere around when Christianity was coming into Great Britain and taking over. So it was had a lot of the old Celt stuff and the new Christianity stuff and all this stuff. And the, I just, at some point, I just kind of put it away because it was one of those ones where every every single thing I wanted to say, I had to go research, right? Like, you know, I like he put oh, on yeah. his sandal. Was it called a sandal? Would they have worn yeah. a sandal? Was it made of leather? Was it made right. of you know, plant material? You know, so, and I just, it was like, I couldn't write because I'm, I'm not a I'm not a bookmark and fix it later kind of person. I need to yeah. know. I I what, my stories are extremely character driven, and especially when I'm mm -hmm. I'm doing it by the seat of my pants, I do need to know what's going on now because yeah. that affects what happens later. It's a direct connection. So right. um, that was that was an, that was one of the nice things about starting debriefing the dead is because I was I was making up the world. I didn't have to go research yeah. it. You know? <laughs> I mean, exactly. There's, there's real place. Yeah, there's real places in there, and and um and I did stick to some some themes and norms and stuff like that. But um, but I didn't have that issue because I could 
be like, well, dead people do this because that's what they do. <laughs> right, know? right. Yeah. My series is contemporary as well. I have the first two books and she's an uber psychic with her own Scooby gang, you know, but she has a past life. But uh, so the women who write historical fiction, all that historical stuff, my hat tips to them. But I, I, I stick into contemporary. And then a few of times, like she, she is a Boudicca Celtic warrior queen in her past life because you know i mean i want to make it interesting and it's just be very powerful she's not the scullery maid you know <laughs> but uh, in her past life but that of course i had to do a little bit of research but anyway i i applaud those historical writers <laughs> historical fiction it's, it's funny that you mentioned scooby-doo because i was actually thinking about when i when you sent me the questions and asked what i used to you know what inspired me when I was yeah, when, I, yeah. when I used to watch when I was a kid. I thought, oh, I watch Scooby Doo all the time. But that was all about debunking, like the, right. you know, the ghost always turned out to be the evil caretaker of the grounds or you yes. know whatever. So, <laughs> so I, I don't know if you've ever seen Los Spookies on HBO. Uh, no, I saw the poster just the other day online. It's 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 hilarious, indescribable. It's really good. But it's basically a grown up. Hispanic Scooby Doo, except the ghosts are real. Oh, it's like it's, that's hard, it's, it's really, yeah, it's really hard to explain yeah, because it's yeah. like they're they're they really are Scooby Doo type gang, but the ghosts are actually real, and it's it's okay. really it's really genre defying. I yeah. I don't like like I don't like to pigeonhole stuff, and that's kind of how my books are. Is it's hard to say is this a romance? Is it an urban fantasy? Like you know what what yeah. exactly is it? Um, this in Los Spookies is like that. It's just I highly recommend it. That's another well, favorite. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I have I have to see it because I mean I just happened to see the poster the other day. Like you know you're looking at stuff online, you see stuff right. below, and I'm like, oh, what right. is that? And then you mention right. it, so that's a message yeah. to me. It's see, on yeah. So that's that's the yeah. kind of thing I feel like that there's there, there's like an energy. And like, I'll be yeah. constantly, you know, back, back when there used to be, you know, a lot more bookstores and malls and we didn't get everything oh, on our Kindle yeah. and, and on Amazon or whatever, yeah. um, this would happen to me. It would happen to my mom too. We'd be like, we'd be like thinking about one of our favorite authors and then walk past a bookstore and there's a new release, right? Right, right. Or, you know, or thinking about, you know, like I haven't thought about my cat in a while and then suddenly my cat walks into the room or whatever. So, so I yes. do believe that there's some energy floating around out there and, and we all, we put it out and we can also receive mm -hmm. it if we're open to it. Synchronicity. I, I listen to a lot of podcasts, a lot of paranormal podcasts. Yeah. Some of those people are actually going to be on this show, but um, one of them was just titled, is it really a coincidence? And the whole thing was about all these synchronicities, but yeah. uh, now I, it's one of my favorites. Uh, now, if it's not you, you might know someone. Uh, but did you have a, uh, have you seen a ghost? Or have you had a strange experience? Uh, yes, I believe so. Um, and okay. yes, <laughs> Lot, lots of strange yeah, experiences. Um, the most vivid ghost one that I remember is a couple of like a day or two after my husband's grandmother died. I woke up and I swear she was just sort of hovering near the foot of the bed. And then she wow. kind of came around and went over to my husband's side of the bed and then she was gone. And the weird thing for me about it was I didn't know her as a young woman, obviously, at all. Like my husband and I met when we were basically when we were 20 and his grandparents were already in their 60s at that time. And so I never okay. knew her younger than about 60. But but she was wearing like this sort of very soft pink old fashioned dress that I'd never seen before, not in any photos, don't know what it was. It was kind oh. of a dusty pink. Like it was very specific. It was dusty yeah. pink and it had like a, a kind of a crepe drape in front. And, but it, but it was her. So I, I feel very like detailed. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And that's, what's so weird about it. Like it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like I just sort of felt a chill or something. There was, it was very, yeah. very vivid. And I feel like she, I didn't feel threatened at all. I feel like she was just stopping by to say goodbye. And then she went on her way and, um, my grandmother wow. had what my, my dad's mom had one when my grandfather died. Um, he was in the hospital and <clears throat> she had, they had convinced her to go home for the night and she went home and she woke up to go to the bathroom. And when she was coming out of the bathroom, the hospital called to say that he had died. And so she feels, and she was the least one, like least woo person you could probably ever meet, but she thinks yeah. he stopped by and woke her up and, and on his way out. Oh, 
Yeah, she probably had sort of a funny feeling. It wasn't like, yeah. oh, I just have to use the loo or something. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, you get the phone call. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, and, and I've yeah. had other things, you know, um, seen, seen like kind of spooky, spooky images and stuff here and there throughout. But that one was the most vivid, I think. Wow. Yeah, that's really amazing. What, uh, if you don't mind me asking, sorry, I keep having a, I'm in a warm room <laughs> um, <laughs> and I'm wearing a robe. Um, <laughs> what did your husband say when you described it? Did he, did it, what, how did he take it? He's, he's, um, he's more concrete and more logical. Oh, okay. He doesn't, he doesn't, that's he doesn't dismiss it. Like he doesn't think yeah. it couldn't happen. Um, he he agrees that there's that we all have energy and it has to go somewhere. He's yeah. less convinced that that living people can see that energy in some form or another. Okay. Um, so he, but he's not he's not closed minded about it. He's open. He he's you know not he not saying yes it happened, but not dismissing it either. Oh, open exactly. to the possibility. Yeah, yeah, because he knows you wouldn't just create that <laughs> anyway. Right. Right. <laughs> um, so. Uh, I would like to ask if you have advice for uh, aspiring writers, people who, let's just say, you know, people who are trying to get published, they're writing right now and they're trying to get published and or an agent. What would you say? So, you know, my father-in-law, when he first met me, um, he ran, he used to own a used bookstore in Berkeley and was an avid oh. reader and various things. And this was long before I was sort of seriously pursuing publication. And what he said to me really stuck with me. He said, you're either a writer or you're not. So oh, okay. what I would say, <laughs> you know, a lot, of, and I know this isn't necessarily what you're talking about, but a lot of people say, I want to write a book someday. And my answer to that yeah. is, okay, then write a book. You know, there's no, there's nothing stopping yeah. you, right? But what I would say to aspiring writers is just keep writing. Um, if you are, yeah. you know, I, I think it's the industry has changed so much from when I started seriously pursuing publication to when mm -hmm. I actually was offered my first contract, which was debriefing the dead with Wild Rose Press, um, to where it's even gotten now. Um, and I think that there, you know, I'm in a lot of writers organizations and I'm on a lot of, you know, loops and, and Facebook groups and things. And what I see a lot of is I sent this out to five agents and nobody even requested the full manuscript. So I'm going to publish it myself. So what I would, what I would say is that's a slippery slope. And if you aren't even getting requests for a full manuscript, you might need to rework or start something yeah. different. You know what I mean? Like, I think yeah. that's the thing that's really hard for a new writer to hear um, yeah. And I 100% know the first few, the first few books I wrote, not going to go anywhere. They really are not going to go anywhere, you know, and there's, there were so many that I started and never even finished with good reason now that I'm looking back because they really weren't that great of a story or they weren't, you know, I didn't have enough conflict. I didn't have whatever. Um, but you I were, I feel, excuse me, you were honing your craft, you know, right. you're honing your craft. Right. Right. You learn something just like with children, yeah. you learn something with every book. Right. So if you just write one book and that doesn't go anywhere and you say, well, that's everybody else's problem. You know, you haven't <laughs> you haven't taken you haven't yeah. considered that industry experts might have some knowledge of what's sellable and or, you know, what 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 helped me was, again, I was I started out in the days when you pretty much had to get an agent. But I was also kind of ballsy and I queried my dream editor at St. Martin's um, at the time. And I was like, you know, what the heck? What have I got to lose? And she actually, this was a cold, you know, cold call email, um, actually letter. Yeah. It was a it was a typewritten letter at that point. It wasn't even on email. Back and in the day. She wrote, yeah. And she wrote back and actually requested more of the manuscript. So that said to me, okay, this is this has got something. She ultimately decided it wasn't for her, but the feedback she gave me was more along the lines of, you know, this is more introspective than I like. Mm -hmm. So I took from that, okay, this, this book might not be for her, but it might be for somebody else. Somebody else might like yeah. it. Um, and, you know, and so I, I started, you have, to, you have to read between the lines. If all you're getting is form rejections, then the lines that you read, you have to read between are, might not be for this agent, might not be for this editor. It might just be that there's too many books in the genre, right? There's no, there's, it's really hard when you're just getting the form rejection. Oh yeah, yeah. But if you, but if you start, if you don't get ever get any requests, 
then you say, okay, you know, maybe, maybe my plot isn't strong enough. Maybe my hook isn't appealing enough. Um, and yes, you can go self-publish that book. I, you know, that's fine. Uh, there's nothing wrong that I have. My publisher Parish was, I did indie publishing. Um, mm -hmm. And in fact, that's actually the, the book that I just used as an example where I queried my dream editor. That was an early version of publisher oh, okay. Parish, yeah. which I then strengthened and, and um, rewrote and ultimately decided to publish myself just because I, I wanted the experience of actually indie publishing at that point. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so just don't, don't give up, but also yeah. be open and realistic to comments. Um, make sure you've right. got a critique yeah. group or a critique partner or somebody yeah. other than your mom or, you know, <laughs> who's yeah. going to read your book and, and say to you, I did not like this part. This didn't work yeah. for me, you know? So I, I have a group of about four or five beta readers now that I send my books to just really just to yeah. say, you know, did this make sense? Was this confusing? Um, two of them are, uh, my books have a lot of French in them and my comparative literature, French was actually my primary language, but I still have oh, okay. my, my aunt, my aunt who was a French teacher for 40 years. And then one of my best friends who lived in France and then Switzerland um, for two years. Um, I have them read it for the French to make sure that that's, you know, oh. in good shape. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, um, and then I'm also, I'm, you're talking about historical stuff. I'm actually working on a historical mystery series now. And I just Ooh. joined a critique group of other mystery writers because I wanted somebody who was familiar with that genre to go through this book with me yeah. and tell me, well, that, that villain is so obvious, you know, <laughs> you know, right, I mean? right. like there's, there's, some, you're too close to it. So yeah, yeah. Just to, yeah, I know we, I know we exactly. don't have unlimited time, but just to you know yeah. cycle back is really just keep writing, just keep writing, yeah. and don't don't just sort of throw away any criticism you get. It can hurt like holy hamabanas. Oh, I know. Says they, yeah. When somebody <laughs> says they don't like something about your book, yeah. and sometimes yeah. that's the the reader's issue, not yours. But sometimes it's an issue with your book, so you have to kind of mm -hmm. sift through like. I mean, just as a, as a, you know, example of the, of the, it's the reader's issue, um, Debriefing the Dead is written in first person and long before getting published, I entered it in a few contests. I did one of the contests, I got like a one out of 10 for point of view, because oh. the reader said they were confused by the point of view. And I'm yeah. like, it's first person. <laughs> first person like, is I woke up this morning and I took the cup yeah, instead like, of she, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I was just like, okay, so this person obviously doesn't read first person books very yeah. often. So I, so I, so that one, I kind of wrote off yeah. a bit, but then I would get yeah. other feedback of like, you know, this, this seemed really obvious, or I was confused by what was going on here or whatever. That's when you want to, you know, especially if you have more than one person saying the same thing, um, yes. you don't want yes. to, you don't want to crowdsource your novel, but you also want to pay attention when somebody not as close as you uh, reads it and, and can't quite follow right. the through line. But just keep writing. Um, that's that's really the bottom line. Yeah. Just keep writing. What freed me, keep writing. Okay, you guys, that's, that's a wonderful note. And um, what freed me is, I heard someone say this years ago on some TV show or something like that, uh, uh, or some author. And I can't remember who, but what freed me was, you know, when I was first writing, I was like, oh my God, I was already writing that book. They hate it. And I'm like, I have to stop that, you know, that's not going to help me. <laughs> and I just realized um, if everyone in the world loved my book, I would have done something wrong because, well, especially paranormal too, but um, it's, you're not going to please everybody. And then once I realized that I'm like, I'm free, you know, and right. I know my peeps. I know my right. my audience, um, and uh, I'm just gonna, you know, they if they love it, that's great. I mean, I don't read political history books; that's not my thing. Right. But uh, right. other people don't read my paranormal books, so that's fine. Right. Whatever right. works for them. So we have that's, that's, um, yeah. what? No, I was just gonna say that's that's how I feel like about like sometimes people will say to me, "How can you recommend a book you haven't read?" And I'll be like, "Well, I don't like this genre." Yeah, but I heard the author speak, and I really, yeah. you know, I think they're a really interesting person, or or whatever, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, um, you know, write the book that you would like to read, yes. and then the readers that want to read that book, hopefully, will find you. <laughs> 
Right. And what do you love? What are you passionate about? And for me, it's, you know, um, reaching across the veil to see ghosts or get messages from the dead and it helps somebody else. And it's, I got, the, not that it's, this is about me, but I got the idea for the Kelly Society. Vivian Kelly is the Uber psychic. That's her group, the Scooby gang, mm -hmm. the Kelly Society. And because I remember like, sometimes I'd listen to true crime um, podcasts. I can only take so Love much of it, crime. you know, forensic files. It's like, oh, yeah. it's so sad. And then I swear, Carrie, half the time they say, oh, she was only 18 and she was walking home. At, it was at night, but her, her house was only two blocks away and her she was just with her friend. They said, good night. You want us to walk with you? No, I'm OK. My house is right there. They never see her again. And she's dead in the ditch. I'm like, God, what if she had had a bad feeling about Mr whoever that asked for directions or the car that drove by. Right. And that's how I got the idea for God. I wish there was someone really psychic, a real psychic woman who could help people and this and that. And so that's how I got the character, but yeah. you know, we're not, you know, some people click into the intuition, which we all have, right. but some right. don't. Right. Yeah. That's there's fine. some people who are very, I think very resistant to that and, and it goes like, I mean, you can take it to the extreme and people that ignore like, you know, the really bad signs of an abusive relationship or something. That's the extreme, right? Yeah. But then there's also, you know, again, it's, it's, I can't tell you the number of times when I've gone out to my car, realized I forgot something, run back in, gone back out to my car and then come up on an intersection where there was a huge crash. And if I hadn't forgot whatever it was, I would have, you know what I mean? Like yes. that has happened so many times to me, right? So, yeah. you know, and I could have said, oh, well, I don't need whatever that is and not run up you know, run back to get it or whatever. But I'll, I'll do that sometimes where I'm in the car and I'm like, I have a choice of directions and I'm like, yeah, I feel very strongly I should go this way. So I pay attention to that. And I, yes, that's, a, and that's, that's why a we're talking. Of, well, I'm sorry. Yeah. I was gonna say, that's a fascinating idea that, you know, I love, I love the concept of your, of your Kelly society. Yeah. I'm gonna have to check that one out. <laughs> well, one of my favorite TV shows was, was Medium with Patricia Arquette. Oh, I loved that. Yeah. yeah and yeah, Alison Dubois, the real medium who worked with the Arizona police, is has a podcast now and YouTube channel that I've been looking at too. Oh, nice. But yeah. um, so we have five minutes left. In that okay. time, please tell us about your uh, what you can with no spoilers about the new book and what's coming down the pike for you. So um, I did bring my book so I could show them oh, all. this is the new one this is Ooh, burying the dead um Your this is damning is this is the other <laughs> yes i'm very fortunate in my cover designer um and she wishes to remain anonymous so i can't i can't out her oh um i was gonna she, ask you she's a Debbie taylor <laughs> no she she's at wild rose press but she doesn't yeah. normally do covers and she doesn't want everybody to know because she doesn't want okay. everybody asking her okay. long story mm -hmm. um but anyway but so burying the dead uh it's hard it's hard to say anything about it without doing spoilers let's see if you can actually yeah. see it um, it came out in January, but, just last month. Yeah, it literally came out a month ago. Um, and it, uh, let's just say, so this is a sequential series and uh, Hyacinth and Friends just keep getting deeper and deeper into the doo-doo, um, especially Hyacinth. <laughs> and yeah. the types of choices that Hyacinth has to make, you know, it's it's one of those, this is a really bad choice, but then this one's even worse, right? So um, she, oh, okay. she has to... She, she has to face uh, literal and figurative demons. And um, there are a couple of, um, I think, very surprising plot twists in this book that um, readers of the series hopefully will resonate with. Like, it won't feel like it's so out of the blue that it's crazy, yeah. but we'll be like, oh my gosh, I didn't see that coming, but I did, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, great. Um, and this, this is book four. There's going to be at least a book five I think I'm gonna I think it will end with book five um but this series has been kind of like that for me where I'm like oh wait a minute again it's very character driven and yes. all the choices that Hyacinth, ma Hyacinth makes keeps driving this series in a different direction than I'm expecting um so wow. I have a lot of fun writing it uh, I'm, I have started the next one but um it's yeah. been um, I'm a teacher I'm a teacher and January and February are kind of insanely busy months for teaching oh. so I've been a little didn't get quite as much yeah. uh, progress as I wanted, but I'm I'm starting it. I know. Also working on I'm, what? I was just gonna say I'm, I'm also working on getting them into audio finally. So um, great. I, yeah. So yeah. I haven't done that yet, but cool. I've I've started the process. 
Well, I feel you. I have, I'm not teaching, but I have the day job. And so, you know, I just, you kind of work yeah. your schedule around it. And then, you know, um, I guess the yeah. summer's good though, right? If you have some. You would think, you would think, but there's usually goes, so much recovery time. And then yeah, if you yeah. want to take even a, one trip with your family and then right. boom, it's like two weeks until school starts again. So. Exactly. My sister's but, on the know. same schedule, but she's a school psychologist. So, so she, yeah, the summer goes fast. But we're ending our time here. But thank you so much, Carrie. This is amazing. Thanks and I'm going to start the first book very soon. And everyone, so uh, check out Carrie's website. I'm going to have on the bottom. Sorry to keep interrupting you. <laughs> That's okay. I'll give you my link tree. My link tree is, is actually the better way oh, to get a hold of me. Because okay. it's got everything on it. So um, email me that. I'll put it in. Yes. Awesome. And thank you so have much. A, have a great uh, President's Day weekend. <laughs> yes, you too. Bye. Okay.